So as I promised, um, I know I gave more of an analytical kind of definition of what an erudite is last um, in our last session. But here, it's, I, th I think this picture is something that captures all of the, um, all of the characteristics of an erudite. Um, and I, I, think, I, I think at the end of this, you'll all be better at, at, at trying to recognize someone um, ha as one uh, of the signs. So, I mean, you can start here. I mean, it has the classic elements. You see a man surrounded by books, um, taking notes. Um, and if you really, uh, there's a lot of other things here that it isn't, it wouldn't be clear. Like you're thinking he's looking at that portrait artist and he's, he's thinking, um, am I posing right? Do I look like an erudite? That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be his inner dialogue. He's actually not even aware that that person is there. He is off. If you look at his, his, um, uh, look in his eyes and you see um, that posture, that's one of stillness. He's not in a kind of, he's in a, he's still waters there. He's in deep thought. He's in flight. He is off. He is off in his inner dialogue. He's in deep cycle. And he, again, right, he's not probably aware of the pen, but he probably could. He's not, aware, like, there's a dog jumping. I'm sure he's not aware that that dog is even in the room. And in his mind, like, you know, even the bird, like, I'm sure he thinks the bird is in a cage, and somehow he's thinking that, but that bird is clearly, that bird at any moment can take off and, and be gone. Probably, it would be, this would be interesting if you asked him, even if there was a bird in the room, he prob probably wouldn't know. Um, so there's different things going, um, there's different things going on with this gentleman. I think the large book in front of him is also another telltale sign. I mean, there's nothing more delightful to an erudite to have a large book up on a book easel. I mean, that's, that's key there. Um, I mean, you have books that you, you can not only stack them on the shelf, but you can, and, a sh and, a, and the books are like to me, when you, when you, when you look at, when you try to identify birds by uh, seeing what kind of eggs they have in the nest. Oh, this is a robin's nest. There must be a robin around. Oh, look, these are a sparrow's nest. Um, look at these eggs. There must be sparrows around. In this case, you, if that's what books are. Books help you kind of figure out what kind of erudite they are. Um, in this particular case, um, the book easels, the books opening up, the books on different planes, one, the writing, he's not only reading books, he's writing a book, it looks like, I mean, he may just be taking notes, but you see what I'm saying, that is a, that is feverish erudi erudition happening, okay, and that's why I like using a painting, because if you look at a painting, and you think about it, it was, at one point it was tr kind of drying there, and I think that's that, it has that metaphor of erudite to erudition once the paint dries this becomes itself an expression of erudition but while it's drying while it's still kind of almost in its active most alive it's as it's going to be it's see to me a wet painting is is alive once it dries yes it's still it's but it's somewhat entombed like a, a verb becomes entombed in a noun so that's where i think this painting moves from an erudite to erudition and ha how we can speak about it now. But I, I think an another thing that's, that's very interesting, I'm sure in his mind, what he's trying to do, yes, there are animals. Eventually he will recognize, I mean, I'm not going to say that he can, com you know, he's completely unaware of anything in the room, but he's probably thinking, how can I get my mind to control these animals and control them in such a way that that they will move the pages on the books when like that tail I can see it flipping the page of that large book he's just thinking if I can control the mind of the bird if I can get it to just get the tail and, and give it that dexterity by which it can it can really just get one page and flip it over wouldn't that be wonderful wouldn't that be um, wouldn't that be something um, that I can get happy about maybe he would see you'd see a smile come up on those lips a little bit more now it's just kind of he doesn't want to see 
I, I know that defensive look because I'm an erudite myself. Um, I, I have, I have, um, I've diagnosed myself as a, an erudite. A, a simple test. It's when people, um, you know, you, you may, you, someone's in front of you and they're talking to you and you see their lips moving, but you're really not listening to what they're saying. It's, it's, um, you know, you're trying, you're, you're trying to break your inner, inner dialogue, but you're really locked in on something. You know, you're, you're not ready to pull away that easy just because someone's in front of you and their lips are moving. Um, but there is a, there is a consequence to that. The consequence is that, you know, sometimes you had a conversation you didn't know the person was angry with you you know you may have a lot of last conversations with somebody and you, and you really don't know and then you may see them later on at a party and they're like irritated looking at you um and you really don't know why and uh, a lot of times people don't really feel like explaining it to you either so that is that is the consequence um the other consequence is sometimes you may get a phone call and and again someone angry on the other side and saying where are you i thought you were going to pick me up uh, I'm all dressed up. I thought you were going to take me to the party. And like, what party are you talking about? Or maybe it was like, look, you know, I'm here. The movers are here. Where are you? You're supposed to help me. You said you were going to help me pack. I'm like, I, I, I don't remember committing to that. Honestly, if I've, and, and, you know, it's an uncomfortable feeling because you know if you would have heard them actually, if you got your ears to take it in, you would have told them, no, I'm not helping you move. Right? You didn't help me move. Uh, but, okay, but let's just say this scenario, you know, so yes, you wouldn't just categorically, if someone doesn't help you move, that, that doesn't make them an erudite, that just makes them a, um, uh, kind of a, a you know, a, not a good friend, right, it doesn't make them an erudite. You'll see some of these, some of these tests I'm using um, are not something that you can um, just categorically, like, I checked this one box, that person is an erudite. I think there's there's more signs. I, I've I've done a little research in this. I used to, I used to go to like go to the public library, and I you know I'd sit there, and I found the best way to um, see if someone's an erudite is to watch them in action. And uh, similar to again, similar to bird watching, it's you know you understand a bird by its by its um, or, or can categorize a bird by its behavior. Sometimes you don't have a you don't see it. Sometimes you only see the nest. Sometimes you only see it from very far away, and you have to be able to understand how it flies how, how does it work in nature how do you unpack that so I, I you know I sometimes I would notice when I was in a public library somebody would come in naturally you hear the door and uh, you know you look over there like oh who's who is who's coming in here who's coming into the library who's this new person and then I, you know sometimes I would see someone stop at the door kind of look look left to right and then they walk over immediately to 